I have some questions that keep me up at night. These are the questions that are inspiring my desire to be of service to you in Congress. And I want to know if you think, if these are the questions that those of us who are involved in politics should be asking. Have you noticed that we're in a time of crisis and that our entire system of navigating crises is failing? We're the first generation to believe that our children in America will have more struggle and less opportunity than we did. And that's a sign of more than just a troubling trend in the economy. That's a sign of the breakdown of the unifying story that has inspired social cohesion for generations. Because a society without a unifying story, without social cohesion, is a house of tinder awaiting any spark to burn it down. Now, what is the two-party solution to this crisis of polarization and despair? Or better yet, why would we expect the most enormous and enormously complex set of crises in human history to be managed with a problem-solving system built when information traveled at the speed of horseback? How will our solutions keep pace with the speed of change of our challenges, of technology in general, unless we fundamentally reimagine what it is to do collective problem solving in the 21st century and rebirth democracy? My next favorite question is how does an economy dependent on ballooning debt and never ending growth work on a planet of finite resources? Why have I never heard one of the two party candidates ever ask these questions? But can I sing? No, unfortunately, I'm a notoriously bad singer. But perhaps, I mean, it's a worthwhile question, but an equally good question is if we only have 40 years of oil and gas left at current rates of use, what infrastructure do we need? What education do we need to invest in now to ensure that civilization bends and doesn't break when energy becomes much more expensive. Which would follow, like, how do we design an economy that meets our needs, and more than meets our needs, that enriches our lives, our hearts, our minds, and our souls, while staying within the limits of sustainability, of just physical reality because what's really concerning here is that we are facing a crisis in our ability to come to shared understandings you could call that a crisis of sense making or if you were fancy or academic you could say it's a crisis of epistemology but i like to think about it as a crisis of democracy now, how can we address any of our other crisis crises whether that's artificial intelligence in the wrong hands or an ecological systems collapse, or a plague of addiction, pandemic, old-fashioned war. Without a revolution in democracy's ability to upgrade its own sense-making. The next question is, if you're keeping track, is what principles, what processes, what systems, what technologies do we need in order to incorporate all the perspectives we need to incorporate <laughs> to build a democracy actually capable of meeting our challenges and inspiring our trust? That's a good question. That's, that's where you start, right? <laughs> and then we'll follow with that would be, well, how do we leverage the same social technologies, information technologies that are currently accelerating our polarization? our division, our gridlock, to instead accelerate cohesion, cooperation, inspired creativity. What is sacred to us? It's my favorite question. Do we want to live in a world built to maximize an imaginary number in a bank account or to optimize for comfort and security at any cost? Or do we want to live in a world where the highest value we organize around is discovering and bringing forward our gifts in service to the beauty and vitality of life? Which of those two paths do you think our children's generation would appreciate more? 
What's something we could give them that is more valuable than money can buy? Because if we're going to live in a world of godlike technology, and we already do, how can we cultivate the godlike wisdom and love we need to ensure the survival of what we really care about, of what we love? By now, you might be wondering who the hell I am and why you should have any faith in my sanity. My name is Liam Madden. I am a former Marine Corps Sergeant who became the leader of the nation's largest organization of anti-war Iraq and Afghanistan veterans. I am an independent. I see value in both sides of the political spectrum and I am not afraid to critique both parties. I am a renewable technology and sustainability entrepreneur who has won awards from MIT's SOLVE competition for organizations that are innovating climate change solutions. I'm a working class child of this country in the Vermont who holds as sacred the natural world, the ideals of democracy and the potential of humanity. I'm the only candidate talking about solutions that actually match the scale of our challenges. Now that if I've asked a question that has struck a chord in your heart, I want you to connect with me. Join my newsletter at rebirthdemocracy.com. Check out what messages and policies we are bringing forward and share and support this campaign if you feel so inspired. We have a democracy to rebirth. I can't midwife it alone. I need you and our democracy needs questions like these at the heart of our political discourse.